Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today I want to talk about arbitrary units. When you look through scientific papers, especially in this field, you see the term come up all the time. Somebody took a measurement, they plotted it on a graph, and they labeled it arbitrary units. Now, I remember when I was first starting out and I found this super confusing. On the one hand, I had my teachers and they would say, every measurement needs to be reported in physical units. If you don't indicate the units of measurement, then your data is worthless. But then, on the other hand, I would look at these figures reported in arbitrary units, and it's like the authors were saying, yeah, whatever, here's some units. But they're just arbitrary, so don't even worry about it, right? And it's like, which is it? Make up your mind, bro. Well, it turns out that measurement units do matter, and they especially matter when they are arbitrary, because it warns us about an important limitation on how we can interpret arbitrary units. Specifically, arbitrary units can't be directly compared in different experiments, or in different labs, or even really in the same lab from day to day. They only allow us to make comparisons within the context of a single experiment. Let's take a specific example to see how this works. Today, I'm going to measure the fluorescence of a bacterial culture. I've engineered this culture to express GFP, the green fluorescent protein, and I want to know if my transformation worked. Are my engineered cells fluorescent? Well, lucky for me, the fluorescence properties of GFP make it easy to measure. So, I grow a culture of bacterial cells, and I transfer a specific volume into a fluorometer. The fluorometer shines a light on the cells at the excitation wavelength of GFP, then uses an optical filter to collect the light at the emission wavelength for GFP. The emitted light is transformed into an electrical signal that is reported by the computer as a number. Let's say 100. Is 100 a lot? Is it a little? Did my transformation work? Well, without more information, we have no way of knowing. Let's look at all the different choices that make this measurement specific to my lab and to my hands. I chose how many cells to load into the fluorometer. If I'd put more cells, I'd get more fluorescence. The fluorometer shines a light on the cells. This could be a strong light or a weak light, depending on the kind of machine that I bought. Then, the machine collects the light, and the internal circuits turn that light intensity into a number. But all that depends very specifically on how the machine was built. Now, I certainly don't know everything about how a fluorometer is engineered. But all of these little choices affect my measurement. 100, 1000, 1 million, or if I give my cells to you and you repeat the measurement in your lab with different equipment, you're bound to get a different number. The number is arbitrary. What this means for us effectively is that no single measurement contains information. By itself, it's meaningless. But we can make our measurement meaningful again by establishing a point of comparison. Because I'm a super good scientist, I never forget to include a control. So, now let's take another population of cells, we'll call them wild-type cells, that don't express GFP. We take the same volume, put them in the same fluorometer, and take another measurement. We get another number, also in arbitrary units. This time it's 4. All of the specific details of our experimental setup still apply. But, now they apply equally to each measurement. So, it's valid for us to say that my transformed cells show 25 times more fluorescence than the non-engineered cells. If you do the experiment in your lab, you'll get different numbers. But, you'll get the same ratio. We might say 25 to 1, or we might say 25 million to 1 million. You should always keep this in mind when you see data reported in arbitrary units. Only the relative values are meaningful. Never be tricked into comparing arbitrary units between experiments or between labs. Finally, to be really confident in working with arbitrary units, we need to confirm one more assumption that makes all of this work. Specifically, we need to be sure that 25 times more signal really means 25 times more fluorescence. Imagine, for example, that I loaded only a very small number of cells onto the machine, fewer than it could detect. I might get a value of zero for the experiment and zero for the control. Or, 
Imagine that I just cram that machine full of cells, enough to completely saturate the detector. I might get a value of 1,000 for the experiment and 999 for the control. We need to be working in a sweet spot where the machine is sensitive but not saturated. A place where 25 times the fluorescence really means 25 times the signal. We call this sweet spot the linear range and we'll want to know it for almost any equipment that we use to make measurements. For a fluorometer, for example, we can find this range by loading a standard fluorescent molecule at known concentrations. Eventually, doubling the concentration of the molecule will stop doubling the fluorescence readings. That's how we know we've left the linear range and that comparisons using arbitrary units are no longer valid. Arbitrary units are a useful way to report data, like fluorescence data, that can easily vary between labs and between instruments. It's still perfectly valid to compare the measurements within a single controlled experiment, and it doesn't require that every lab on Earth buy exactly the same equipment and work in exactly the same way. Just remember, don't be impressed if you see someone measured 9,000 arbitrary units, because it could just as easily be 10. And don't expect the arbitrary units that you measure to match with numbers that come from someone else. When it comes to arbitrary units, you just do you. And you remember, until next time, you are special. Thank <laughs> you.